father, the medical system is to always to make sure that you have instruments that have not expired. This is called a pouch, okay? Um, and this instrument pouch, and this is where we put our instruments in, and I'm gonna show you in a moment how to operate an autoclave where we want to sterilize our instruments. You know how we went over the chain of infection? Well, with the chain of infection, sanitizing the instruments was how we would use a um, metal scrub brush. Disinfectant solution, I would put it in the solution. So sanitizing reduces pathogens to a safe level. Disinfection destroys all pathogens. And now sterilization is going to be complete destruction of all microorganisms. So this pouch has a shelf life of six months. It is important as medical assistants that you know this because it's your job when you come in not only to do the eye wash, but you need to check your stock to see if you're rotating to make sure nothing's expired. And you also need to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that this doesn't have to be re -autoplayed. So what you'll have to do on the back, um, and I'll show you how to put the instruments in a, in a moment. What you have to do on the back is at the top, you can put your initials, just your initials, and the expiration date, so put EXP, what's the date? Uh, May 19th, so May, June, no, July, so August, May, October, November. 20th. Oh, it's the 25th? Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. So what, November 20th? And we actually do one day short. So I would do November 19th, 2021. That's what I would do, okay? Then you also wanna say what's in the pack. We're gonna do the same thing when we wrap the instruments. One, this lets us know who um, prepared these instruments. So if we open them and they're contaminated, we know who to go to. Two, it also helps us to understand when this is going to uh, expire, okay? So <clears throat> after I've done that, you can see here that I've put some instruments in here and you can see how I opened them up. And that's because I wanna make sure that the steam gets to every part. Now, I have not autoclaved these, but I did autoclave this one. Can you see where it's black right here? But you see this one is still kind of pinkish, okay? Mm -hmm. One is black and one is pinkish. Mm -hmm. This lets me know, if you're looking right here, this lets me know that at least enough steam got to it. But one of the other things I can do is add, <clears throat> sterilization indicator, okay? A sterilization indicator can be placed in the pouch and it also lets me know that enough heat or enough steam got to the instruments and hopefully it's autoclave. This says steam indicator strips. You can also put the date and whoever the operator is. You can put the initials and here you can actually put the date that you actually autoclaved it here, you're gonna put the date that it expires. So when I'm looking at it, I can look at it quickly because I can't really see that if it's inside the pouch, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> when we put instruments in, this side is where we put it in, okay? We open it up, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little tab off, and then we're gonna close it. Okay? And then when we open, we open from the other end. Now, what's nice is we can open it up when we have a sterile field and we can drop it in the field or we can open it and this can be our sterile field, okay? So anything that you open is sterile inside, okay? Now, when we um, write the dates and so forth, we need to use a permanent marker because if we use anything else like a ballpoint pen, it's going to run and you're not gonna be able to see it. It will smear. Okay. We also have here um, different size um, uh, blade handles, and this is a disposable one, but it's also, it's packed, so it's sterile, correct? This one is a number 15, this one is a number 10, and this one is the number 11. They're all shaped a little differently, so I'm going to open them up so you can see how they're shaped a little differently. and then why we would use different instruments for different procedures. <laughs> okay. 
you see the different shapes? Very different, very different, okay? So let me put this one here. This is the number 10. It has more of a round beveled edge. And so when they're doing incisions, like say, I'm going to remove a cyst, or if I'm doing open heart surgery or something like that, the number 10 is what they use to open the patient up, okay? Most of us are gonna use the number 15. If, and I just, just said if we're removing a cyst, but if I'm doing a larger type of excision, I'm gonna use a number 10. Or if I'm debriding something, like in my field, I would debride calluses or something like that. So I would use a number 10, okay, on the bottom of the foot. The number 15 is when we're trying to remove smaller type of cysts or something like that, or some other type of maybe a little lipoma or something, or maybe a little mole. So because it has a more um, contoured uh, of the 15, of the 15 blades, it's a little bit more contoured than you have in the number 10, as you can see. So you can do a little bit smaller and more um, precise types of incisions. This one is the number 11. Okay, it's very, very sharp. Okay, almost looks like a knife, right? Very, very sharp. So this one is when we are doing more, um, like maybe going around the cuticle or we're trying to do something where we really get into a small, narrow area, okay? This also is more a little bit of stabbing. So say I was trying to remove a splinter, I was trying to remove something like that. I would use this because I can go into a smaller area, okay? So as you guys are researching, Okay. As you guys are researching, you'll be able to discern between the different types of blade handles that you're going to use. Okay. This right here is a surg um, cervical kit, suture, suture removal kit. And with the suture removal kit, you have the suture scissors in here, which are nice because it has a little curved edge where you can get underneath the suture. And I'm going to show you a video a little later. Um, and demonstrate how you would get underneath there to be able to remove the, uh, the, the um, uh, suture. I would also use a number 15 to remove the suture. So I would grab a suture like this and I could use number 15 because it's a lot smaller, okay? Now, if I don't have that, I also have a little pickup in here. This is disposable, so once I use it, single use, I can discard it, okay? I would put it in the sharps, not in the biohazard trash, okay? All right, our other instruments over here. And later on today, we're going to do suture removal. So this right here is called a needle holder. This is a large needle holder. We usually put our thumb and our ring finger, and it has a locking mechanism so I can clamp down. And the reason why this is a little different is it's flat, and I'm gonna show you this is called a uh, straight Kelly hemostat. And you can see how this is a little longer with the hemostat, right? Mm -hmm. But this one is a little shorter. Why? Because I'm using this one when I'm suturing, when I'm putting sutures in. Now, with the Kelly hemostat, I can use this to clamp down on vessels or clamp down for the tissue to pull the tissue back if I don't have a self-retracting uh, instrument to, if I'm working alone. Um, you can also use a curved hemostat. So, you know, they're different instruments. What you really need to know is the different names of the instruments and when the doctor asks for it to be able to hand it to them. And when you hand it, you do hand it like this so that it goes right into their hand. You have to um, make sure that you know how to give that to them. Most times you're just going to be assisting to make sure they have everything and then the doctor is going to have their instruments um, uh, placed. All right. So, as you saw, this is a um, large needle holder, and this one is a smaller needle holder. Same shape and so forth, okay? This is a bandage scissor. So, if I were removing a lot of thick bandages, which when I go over there, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, um, this is what I would be using for that. Um, and it's nice because it has an edge right here so that you don't damage the tissue because sometimes you're gonna be pressing against the skin when you're trying to remove the bandage. Here are some other types of scissors that you could use. Okay, some are sharp. This one's an iris and this one is a curved bandage uh, scissor. This right here, which you also have in, in kits, if I don't have a suture removal uh, scissor, I have a staple removal. So sometimes they put staples in, same thing, you go in, under, and then you remove them, 
okay? You will, as your job, have to remove sutures and staples, okay? You may also have to remove a uh, pin. Sometimes, depending on where they've had an um, external device um, that's inside the body, you may have to remove that and use either a hemostat or something to pull it, or the doctor will do it. But if they start to feel comfortable with you, they'll allow you to do it, okay? All right, let's come over here. 